Oh, this is Margaret Ann Windsor. I'm going to show my face here because my life has been with every law in the book being broken. Torture uh, beyond belief to me and my children, Mark and Scott. Kidnapped from Buckingham Palace in 41 bucks, Molson, Alabama, given the name of a twin, Peggy Ann Benson and Mary Childers. And the other twin was Carl Preston Benson. Both twins were dead. Their mother, Lina Benson, had murdered them. They were born out of wedlock, and the family covered it up. It was a pigsty and brutality beyond belief they did to me. I wrote a book in 76 to 80, April Fool Day of 80, I had antifreeze put in me. And uh, it was about mind control and modifying behavior. Um, you can program people to kill, to uh, you can, um, it goes back to the Tesla files, and I put all this up. Larry Flynn was shot in Lawrenceville, Georgia, while I was doing the book in Marietta, and I'm saying that because one of the doctors I wrote about, and I've put this up in former video, I have to give so much background to, I, you can't put it on a video, so I put it in segments, kind of a documentary, since I can't get an attorney. Uh, to represent me. The Rothschilds, Bilderbergers, my own Uncle George VI, helped kidnap me and put me in, uh, uh, Joseph Kennedy was ambassador to England, appointed by Roosevelt. So you've got the association with the Warren Commission cover up in JFK. They won't tell the truth because it would lead back to my kidnapping. I'm Victoria's second heir to the British Crown. Nine nine year seal was put on my father's forced uh, take down, and my mother is Claudia Oki from Madison, Wisconsin, sister to Georgia. He, my father never married Wallace Simpson. History has been a lie. So I want to go from here back to the car. The cars crossed, and I got up there, and I'm dragging my stuff before night all the way up to Cornelius Shelter to have a place to put it, and uh, it was. I don't remember how cold, what time of the year it was. It wasn't real cold. I mean, like the middle of winter. But anyway, the antifreeze or whatever uh, was turned loose, and I was, when the car didn't run, and I finally got it to run, going up the mountain, it's taking out my lungs. And uh, somebody said the hose to the air conditioning had been pulled or something later. Anyway, I couldn't get the car registered, so Monday he gave me the uh, uh, ownership thing to it, getting ahead of myself uh, here. But anyway, I pulled all that in and finally got it just before dark, pulled into the shelter, and I was so sick I was bleeding, my lungs were bleeding, I was spitting up blood from whatever was in the antifreeze or whatever coming out of it. So I called him, and I didn't have a phone then, so I had to try to get somebody, flag him down to make a phone call. Well, he wouldn't do anything about it. And uh, I couldn't get uh, someone to come and tow it because I couldn't pay for towing it. And I kept hoping I'd get somebody to help me. And they did, and the next thing I knew, the car was gone. And later I found out he had come and picked it up, turned it on, and drove it off, and that's the last I heard of it. Since I can't get things into court, I get moved around and blocked where I stay. There was no way to try to take it into court. Nothing's worked before. It wouldn't have worked then. So he got away with stealing the car and the money. Now I want, and besides the damage done to me, and that, his name is Dwayne Farmer, and he works for the cab company here. Now I'm going to jump real quick because uh, this stuff is, it was a Yugo car. Um... The cab driver, one of the cab drivers I had over the years, and he would do the same thing on his day off. He'd come and pick me up and take me places, and I paid him just like I did the cab company. Now, he took me to a place just off Hanover, uh, off Williamson Road, and right on down to the right would have been Hanover Street. Hanover is used in the royal family names if you go back. Um... I went, there's more to this, but I'm just going to tell what they did to me. He did to me. I went in there and had a room, just to have a room to get out of the uh, forest. I went in, and I'm leaving the rest of the things out. 
the little room I was put in had been a place where it was kind of a boarding house. And they had a couple of nice uh, rooms there, but I didn't get them. The cab driver had one of them. And uh, the rest of it was just dirty. They had fixed a little, it wasn't any bigger than a closet that had a sink in it, and they managed to put a little bed in there. And then I think the refrigerator they got back in there, I stayed about two nights. And the place was um, filled with fumes that were so thick. And the cab driver who had brought me there and lived there also, who I trusted, at that point I needed a place to be so the cops didn't arrest me for living in the forest again. So I've been run by the law enforcement and the people that allowed it to happen. And me being soaked with chemicals, I'm allergic to chemicals, I have an immune disorder. And over the years, if you're exposed to it, especially the way I've been force-fed toxic fumes, it takes out your kidneys, your lungs, your liver, your whole body. And the inflammation is so bad, and I can hardly walk or run anymore. But anyway, I uh, called the cab company, and the guy that brought me out, the guy that lived there, suddenly left. Or so well, no, he didn't, because he brought a fan in there when it got so bad, so he had to move to know they were turning on the fumes that were deadly. I called the cab company, and the cab that come out, he was a black man. I'd never seen him before, and I want to make a point I've never seen him after. He picked me up. Nobody would help me carry my things, uh, camping gear that I tried to keep together, back down the stairs and out. Nobody helped me. He uh, helped me get in the cab, and he told me he was in the armed forces or, or in the military. He's from, I believe he said Northport, Virginia. I know Richmond, Northport. And he told me, he said, lady, uh, he told me that the chemicals that they had put up there, so he had to have known about it. He named them and said that they were deadly. So he took me out, back out to where I had just left and paid the cab driver to bring me there to where uh, it was owned by a cab driver. And uh, this is the place, unless you know the background, people will want to say, well, uh, this isn't happening. Yeah, it is. It happened every day in plain sight. And uh, I never saw him again, so I'm right back in the forest. And the damage done is tremendous to me. And the life that I've lived. I've been in torture, running from the law when I didn't commit any crimes. They've been committed against me. Um, so I guess that's, uh, I, I did want to mention this, uh, I, if I can get it on here. I sent, uh, when I was living at Moonraker doing the book, in a License to Kill, and I found out about my identity in 83. I didn't know about my real name and uh, who I am and my father. And I'm going to backtrack to 78 when Larry Flint was shot. Um, so much was being done to me then. I lived at Moonraker Apartments. And um, I contacted Playboy Press because the only person, nobody would touch it, Patty Hearst, I sent it to Hearst. Then I find out that Patty Hearst uh, Hearst Castle and all that. Hearst was part of, evidently, the Illuminati Freemasons have long-reaching arms because he was part of it. And uh, so nobody would touch the book. So I took it to Playboy Press. I got in touch with Arthur Kretschmer, who was on Playboy, uh, listed on the cover as part of his editorial staff. I even talked to him on the phone. He said he had turned my letter of information over to their attorney. Well, I didn't hear any more from him, and right after that, I moved into Laurelwood on uh, Bentley Drive in Marietta, a few blocks up, and that's where I got the letter from the FBI, and then April of uh, April Fool of 80, I had the antifreeze put in me. So that's when I believe May the 12th, the Playboy Press, plane went down from Chicago to L.A. That was just prior to them moving their home office to L.A., I believe. It went down in Chicago, and I think all aboard that passenger plane were killed. I have to go back and look. 
Butler's Crunch.